Between tax cuts and big spending promises, much of this election campaign so far has been centered on domestic issues. In fact, we've kind of heard very little about what each party's position would be on major foreign policy files. So this week we're asking, over the next few days, we'll be hearing from four different parties to discuss their approaches to foreign affairs. And today we begin with the NDP. Tracy Ramsey is an Ontario NDP candidate. She joins us now from Windsor. Hi, Ms. Ramsey. Thanks very much for making time for us. Really appreciate it. Hi, Vashti. Nice to hear from you. I want to start off by asking you about U.S.-Canada relations. You're the, the leader of your party last week said that he hopes U.S. President Donald Trump gets impeached. Was that appropriate for someone running to be Prime Minister of Canada to say? Well, I mean, first of all, it was in a town hall, and it's really unfortunate that we didn't actually have a debate because uh, we know that Mr. Trudeau refused to go to the foreign affairs, foreign policy debate last week. So, you know, I think perhaps it was a bit flippant, but we take this issue very, very seriously in our party. It's often a topic of conversation around our caucus table, as I'm sure it is many others. Uh, down here in southwestern Ontario, it's very important to us. And a lot of Canadians have been reaching out, expressing deep concern about what they have been seeing under a Trump president. I think that will come as no surprise to anyone across our country. And many are riveted watching what's happening now in the U.S. And, you know, the impact of this will be felt uh, by us quite strongly, obviously because of our, the fact that we're right next to the U.S., but all of the ties that we have with them. And I think also about the jobs that we've lost uh, in the instability that we've had recently with the steel and aluminum tariffs, jobs that have not been replaced. And I think that Canadians are looking for someone to stand up uh, to... Uh, uh, whether it's a Trump presidency or, you know, anyone who is lobbying these kind of attacks at Canada. Uh, we need to stand strong at times uh, when we're being faced with these issues. I understand the point you're making, but given everything that you just outlined, the stakes between mm -hmm. you know, of the relationship between our two countries, Mr. Singh was given the opportunity on Friday to even acknowledge that the remark was flippant or walk it back, and he instead doubled down and said, I wasn't joking. Do you really think that, I mean, given the stakes that you outlined and, and given that president's reaction in the past to comments, for example, from Justin Trudeau, what was that the right move, especially for someone who wants to be prime minister? Again, I think a lot of Canadians are expressing this type of sentiment. You know, a lot of them are wondering what's going to happen in the United States. But it's one and thing to wonder, right? Impeached. It's another thing if, to say, I hope he gets impeached. Well, if he becomes impeached, then we will deal with whoever becomes the new uh, president of the United States. It's an important relationship. And I, again, think that in a, you know, a town hall comment that was made or, or, you know, talking about it again, I think that for me, I know how seriously the NDP and our leader takes our relationship with the U.S. And it's very unfortunate that that won't be on display in a debate because Mr. Trudeau has decided not to participate, apparently, in any debates to this point. Uh, so for us, you know, we know what our policy is. And, and how strongly we stand against some of the decisions that have been made in the U.S. and how serious an issue it is. Should he have made that comment, though? I believe that he made that comment in the middle of a town hall. Again, I wasn't present at that town hall. Uh, again, if we don't have debates in our country, we're not going to be able to he see there will be the a policy. Debate, there will be well, one. And we, there will be a debate. We hope that Mr. Trudeau will show up too because he hasn't so far. Uh, and Canadians need to know where we stand on a whole host of issues around foreign policy, uh, not just our relationship with the U.S., but obviously other countries as well. And we've been very clear in our, in our policy. You'll find all of our uh, commitments that we make to ensuring that we are a strong global partner. You're right there in Windsor, and I, and I do want to ask you about the relationship with other countries, but on the relationship with the U.S. and the trading relationship specifically, I interviewed your party's leader a few weeks ago. Uh, your party, your platform outlines that there is uh, almost too much of a reliance, I'm paraphrasing, on, on the U.S. as a destination for our exports. If your party were to form the next government, what are the top two destinations that you would work towards increasing Canadian exports to? I think it's more about the quality of the trade agreements that we have versus the destinations. We have signed trade agreements with nearly every country across the globe at this point, and now we're starting to look at trading blocks and putting those together. But quite frankly, it's about the fairness of those deals and the impact that it has on working people, on communities, uh, more than it is about the destination. Uh, there are very few countries that we don't have a trade agreement with, and certainly China is one that the Liberals were talking about pursuing, but I can tell you locally uh, there are very many concerns that exist around trade uh, with countries who are not market economy statuses, who, you know, have different structures and different democracies than we do. To me, it's about the quality of the agreements that we're putting forward and who they're truly representing. Does that and, mean that you would open up some of those agreements and re-look well, at those types of things? 
The, the first challenge that we face is with the U.S. Uh, we have not signed on to the new agreement, the new NAFTA, if you will. It's being called different things in different countries. Uh, we see Democrats in the states attempting to improve it, to remove the regressive provisions that exist around uh, labor, talking about patent extension. We had the PBO in Canada do a study on what the impact of the patent extension would be to the cost of pharmaceuticals in Canada. It's tremendous. At a time when we're talking about a need for pharmacare across our country, why would we entertain entering into a deal with our closest trading partner that would tie our hands and actually create more expensive medication? So top priority would be uh, the agreement with the U.S., ensuring that we get a better deal than so we you, currently have. You would renegotiate the new NAFTA, or whatever, you, as you mentioned, <laughs> it's called different things in different places. An NDP-led government would re would open that back up, even though Canada has signed it. It hasn't been ratified, but it's signed, and would try and renegotiate it? We should never have signed that deal. We signed that deal with steel and aluminum tariffs on place in, in a position of great now. weakness. Fair enough. But at the time we signed Bashi, they were not. Uh, and so we signed an agreement, you know, when we already were facing a tremendous pressure and, like I said, of lost jobs. Uh, there are improvements that can and should be made to this deal, and we would make every effort to ensure that we do so. So that means an NDP-led government, let's say, for example, the deal comes back for ratification as it is anticipated to, to do so, would not vote to ratify the deal as it, as it exists right now. This deal does not represent the best interests of Canadians. I understand how many businesses are concerned about having stability, but our farmers, uh, our supply managed folks, every Canadian who needs medication. Uh, I can tell you right now, sitting down here in Windsor, we have a company called NEMAC down the road that just had a two-week labour dispute with people on the front line there, a protest, if you will, because they're moving their jobs to Mexico. So we need to address the very serious concerns that we have about losing uh, good manufacturing jobs and losing jobs across our country to Mexico. And nothing in the new NAFTA will protect or, or help communities who are facing this tremendous challenge we need to address this challenge, and letting this renegotiation go by without doing so is an ex a, a grave mistake. Okay, let me switch gears. I want to ask you about Venezuela and Canada's relationship mm -hmm. with that country. I'm hoping that you can clarify your party's policy position on the stalemate there, the political stalemate in Venezuela. Which leader does your party recognize as the leader of Venezuela, Juan Guaido or Nicolas Maduro? We believe that it's up to the Venezuelan people and we would like to see a fair and democratic process. There's a humanitarian crisis that is happening there right now. And there are many people who are, are feeling that impact and are, are devastated by what's happening in that country. Um, but this is about autonomy and this is about a country being able to determine who their leader is through their processes. It's not for us to uh, determine or say what should be happening in Venezuela. And uh, it's been very difficult to see the impact on people there, uh, the violence that has ensued, and we believe strongly that uh, we need to uh, stand as a strong partner in democracy and saying that Venezuela uh, and the people there really need the right to be able to determine their future. The problem that the, that at least Juan Guaido uh, points to quite often is that the, the results of the last election, many Venezuelans, he says he represents those who felt like they were not free, they were not fair, and therefore they don't have that kind of representation that would guide the reaction of other countries. So I, I understand how your party wouldn't, uh, let's say, not want to endorse Mr. Guaido, but should you not be condemning Mr. Maduro? And in, even insofar as, forget about all the human rights abuses that have been listed that he, uh, that he is accused of perpetrating, but just in the fact that that free and fair election didn't occur. Well, many Canadians were disappointed to see the Liberals jump in and endorse and to get behind someone and become a participant in uh, what should be uh, democratic rights of the people of Venezuela. And I, we heard from many Canadians coast to coast who said that they didn't feel that Canada should be taking that role. So our position is really rooted in making sure that the Venezuelan people have uh, the autonomy and the ability to determine But if they don't future. have that, what do you do? If well, they're Canada, saying that they don't have that, you know, do you, do you sit by the sidelines and watch them endure more years of human rights abuses? The Maduro regime has been accused of crimes against humanity, mm -hmm. murder, torture, rape, imprisonment, yes. persecution, and enforced disappearances. So first and foremost, the NDP stands for human rights in every country being respected. And we have a role to play globally in ensuring that we are being a positive voice, that we are talking to countries where there is strife, where there is humanitarian crisis that are happening, and have those conversations and be able to work together uh, to, you know, as a Canadian country, as our country, to stand up for the human rights of people there. And I think that's the expectation that Canadians have, quite frankly. 
Exactly. Doesn't stand and that's up for those human rights. It, couldn't that mean condemning Mr. Maduro? I take your point on not wanting to take a position on Juan Guaido, but if you're not willing to enforce him, should you be willing to condemn Mr. Maduro and what he's accused of? Again, any human rights violations that are happening in countries globally, we condemn strongly. And regardless of who is the perpetrator of those, uh, it should always be called out. And Canada should be a global leader when it comes to respecting human rights and democracy in other countries. And there is a role that we can play, but it is not imposing uh, our thoughts or who we think should be leading those countries. Okay, I'll leave it there. I'm out of time. Thank you very much, Ms. Ramsey. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, Fashi. Ontario NDP candidate, Tracy Ramsey. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.